All right. So today I'm joined by a uh, Barrett Donovan and Lisa. Um, so when this whole issue went down with the COVID thing, uh, obviously fitness facilities and gyms were about the first places to be closed. Uh, the three of us linked up and decided to uh, bounce ideas off each other and figure out how we take our in-person platforms online and uh, just kind of what to do to keep people engaged in what we do. Um, so I'm joined with Lisa and Barrett today. Um, I will just start asking some questions so that you guys can get to know who they are. So we're doing a bit of an interview. So we'll start with Lisa. Um, what got you into sport slash fitness slash coaching and kind of to where <laughs> you are now? Uh, it's a long twisty road. Um, so I got... I played every sport I could growing up, went and um, basically didn't hit a weight room until I was in college for volleyball and swimming. And uh, from there, learned my first Olympic lift in the basement at Peak Power in at State. Um, and then somehow got recruited to go and compete with bobsleigh for Bobsleigh Canada. And so then that was where like the true in gym training time was spent and then I had some really really knowledgeable and amazing coaches that were leading me and writing programs for me and then I found that I kind of had a knack for picking up what their thought process was and then they also anybody who was willing to listen they would sit down and actually explain and educate you about your program so you had a better understanding of it, basically bought into it more because you understood it further. And um, we would always have like a month to two months off within our entire season to just do nothing. And typically um, your first year, you're like, yes, a month of freedom and you physically do nothing and then you return and it's complete and utter pain. So uh, you, I learned quickly that it was a matter of, even though I had time off, it didn't mean do nothing. So I would write my own programs for that time off, have my coaches go through it, approve it, and then um, carry on. So that was like my introduction to writing programs, truly. And then um, from there, after retiring from bobsleigh, I went into actually doing an office job instead. And I hated every single moment of it. I begged and pleaded for the day where I could just quit my job. And uh, from there through trying to find what I will do if I do quit my job, I found becoming a um, personal trainer. I didn't have the degrees that were required to go and get your CSCS. Um, so I got the personal training certificate and now I do as much further education as I can on my own, on my own time, on my own dime instead. Awesome. And obviously by your shirt, you own the hub I and do. that's located in High River, Alberta. There yeah. we go. Awesome. Cool. Uh, Barrett, same question. Let, let's do yours a little bit different though. Um, are you and, uh, uh, and what business are you running at followed by what got you into the sport, uh, fitness and coaching in general? All right. Uh, well, I'm Barrett Donovan, and I uh, own Next Evolution Athletics out of uh, Calgary, and I uh, work out of the TrekFit Lab facility. And uh, yeah, I've been doing that for, I think it'll be a third year in August. We'll be there. So yeah, it's been pretty cool. Uh, yeah, who, that's me in a nutshell, like for my company anyway. Now, what got me into this? Oh, man. Well, uh, I guess the best way you can describe it is when I was younger, like I started a gym on my 16th birthday and I really did it because there wasn't much else to do. Like I played a lot of sports in uh, high school, uh, but the gym that I worked out, the gym in the area, uh, you couldn't actually get a membership until you were 16. So as soon as I turned 16, I uh, started working out in there, kind of like the bros would, you know, working out leg extensions and squat bench and dead. But what I realized it actually, uh, massively improved my, improved my hockey game and uh from that i kind of correlated the only thing i did differently was work out so i just kept working out and i kept getting better at hockey and then uh i did that all through high school and then i took my degree in kinesiology at the university of brunswick and i graduated from that and then 
taught English in Japan for a year, came back, and then moved to Calgary to become a cop. And the reason why uh, I got into the field was because I took a job as a personal trainer at a, a gym here, and uh, I just took it as a part-time job while I was going through the recruiting process, and then realized it's actually a career path out here. Um, once I realized it was a career path, I haven't looked back since. I've been doing this for 14 years professionally. It's the only job I've had, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with some of the best some of the best coaching in North America with hockey or powerlifting or whatever. And uh, that's kind of how I got into it. I just fell in love with the iron game. Just love those irons. Love those weights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they, they don't care about you. They'll break you in a second, right? No, nope, um, they are <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, cool. Um, we'll follow that up with, uh, you guys are both going to hate this question because it's going to put you in a box that you don't want to be in. But if you had to choose, what is the most important aspect of fitness to you, right? Such a broad question, but uh, what's that aspect and why? So Lisa, we'll start with you. I hate you so much right now. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, Get in your box. Yeah. So Movement quality. Okay. So how well do you move your body through time and space? And it's very personal and very... Um, individual but it's taking what you've got and being able to move it with the best to your advantage awesome that's a that's a very good answer uh, Barrett if you had to pick one of the qualities of fitness what would it be I'd have to honestly have to say mindset yeah straight up because uh, no matter what sport you're, in my opinion, again, no matter what sport you're doing, no matter what type of training you're doing, no matter what athletic endeavor or daily life endeavor you're trying to do, if you don't believe you can do it or you can accomplish it, it doesn't matter how good your movement quality is, how good your strength is, how good your cardiovascular conditioning is, how good, no matter what, you can't do it. So you have to have a mindset to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish, whatever your goals are. All right, so we have... You kind of took the gray area, though. Hmm? You kind of took the gray area there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could sit here and talk about... We could all sit here and talk about strength and iron yeah. and, and everything else all day. We're all power lifters, so... <laughs> but, well, yeah, that mindset is, is crucial, but, yeah. All right, again, well, the way all... I look at it is we got two different answers. One <laughs> is your your psychology is important and the other is physically how well you move is important and i think they're both uh both very very valid uh for different reasons <laughs> and they both apply to each other the debate starts you now. could have the best mindset <laughs> in the world but if you're a quadriplegic your fitness probably isn't going to be the best right uh, so they're both very important hey right? but the power of thinking about good movement is there too no i'm joking <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the fourth question is, if I made you both wear boxing gloves right now, who would win? No. Um, Barrett. Uh, <laughs> um, I, think, I think a big thing that a lot of people uh, uh, miss with anything is people evolve as they grow. So how has your coaching practice evolved over the years? And has your specific focus uh, that you like to look at in coaching whether that be strength or sport or whatever, uh, altered over that course. So Lisa, we'll start with you. Oh gosh, um, I'm learning to talk less. Okay. So learning to find the right moments to speak up and coach verbally, um, and then better identifying the times to just, you know, either body language, head nod, whatever, or allowing the athlete more time to figure out what needs to be improved or what was good before I respond to them. Um, I found when I started, I talked a lot just to fill the air because I felt I had to um, express my knowledge so much that I think I became quite annoying <laughs> um, or the, the point was lost because there was too much chatter going on um but i as i mentioned earlier when we were starting i feel like in my coaching realm i've uh 
I've gone from like, yeah, I totally know what I'm doing to like dropping back down and being like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So to the point where prior to COVID cropping up, um, I was establishing myself where I was going to be shadowing other coaches at higher levels. They were coming in to um, basically do coach the coach sessions as my athletes were training. And um, also I was going to their locations to learn from them and how they were working with their athletes as well, because uh, it's definitely like it's an up and down lifelong learning process for sure. That's awesome. Uh, Jared, how has uh, your practice evolved over the years and has your um, focus shifted? I'd say probably a lot of coaches when they start out get very, um, set into one way or one system and I was that way when I when I first started like it was always like three sets of 10 blah 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 blah, blah like squat first blah blah and now I'm realizing that it's not as dogmatic as it's set out to be so I've really broadened my spectrum and incorporating different types of movements um even some conditioning even for power lifters uh okay. like most people don't think like the power lifter doesn't do conditioning well you know if you aren't fit, chances are you're not going to recover. So if you can't recover, you can't squat again. So there's that. So I, I've actually probably looked at a lot of different methodologies, a lot of different styles, incorporated a lot of different systems. And uh, just in my own training, just for myself, I'm usually getting picked myself and my clientele. So I'm not so set in my ways. I'm actually getting more fluid, for lack of a better term, because I've realized that there are hundreds of ways to make someone stronger or better at their sport. And it's just how you apply that, that foundational knowledge. So just picking up more skills as you go. Yeah, that, that definitely sounds in line with uh, a lot of uh, the stuff that I've heard from a lot of the other coaches that I, you know, you go to their seminars and they're like, yeah, it's just, you gotta do a lot of different things rather than yeah. one thing. I cool. think the more one thing you do, the more trouble you get into. Yeah, yeah, that overuse thing. Yeah. That seems to be a, a big problem that a lot of people uh, find themselves in. Or they box themselves into that corner, right? Where it's oh like, God. yeah, you might be strong and you can lift something once, but uh, but if I ask you to do it again in five minutes, you're so gassed, you can't, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Just like a mental pigeonhole too, right? Because then you're yeah. no longer open to accepting a new thought process or learning something new even even though you know you should you've yeah. pitched yourself as this is what i do that you're hesitant to expand beyond it yeah yeah Co coaching is very unique that way and i found like i've grown in very similar ways to you guys where you start out and then you're just kind of like okay this is what i do this is what's important and then it's like oh maybe i shouldn't cue as much and just tell you when it's appropriate and let you learn yeah. what you're doing a bit, right? Yeah. So when to back off that little bit, I find that's something a lot of coaches have and then boxing yourself in. Cool. Um, if you could, if you guys could go back and change one thing in your career path or uh, life, whatever, what would you do different? Uh, Lisa, <laughs> let's start with you. Uh, well, I mean, if we're going to go all the way back, I would not have bought the bobsleigh that I bought on Olympic year. Cause, um, <laughs> learning a sled in one week to qualify the next just didn't pan out very well. But anyways, um, <laughs> in terms of... <laughs> Again, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um, no, in terms of coaching or in terms of even business operations, I would, I would have gone back with a... Um, a larger seed fund for opening my business <laughs> and having more cash flow in place prior to opening. And uh, I would have now because of COVID, I actually would not have become, been so hesitant or so full of excuses not to go online for an online option. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. What would you have done different? Oh, so many things. I mean, Probably one of the biggest things I wish I could have changed was understanding how to change, understanding behavior change a little bit better. Like even my own personal behavior change. Cause I'm uh, when I was younger, I was so stubborn. Like 
in, I cut off my nose in spite of my face. Like I was just so stubborn and refused to listen to anything that wasn't my own kind of uh, way of doing things. And that really cost me a lot of like really cool opportunities. So I missed a lot of really good opportunities in that sense. Uh, it also caused me to really narrow my focus as, as a coach, not, not only as a coach, but as a person too. Like I, I just missed so many uh, really cool opportunities and, and potential learning uh, situations. Like there's just so many things I could have did not being that stubborn and just slowly making that behavioral change mindset. Like it would have made my business easier. My, most of my relationships a bit easier. My coaching would have gotten massively better. Like there's just so many things that could have changed if I just had understood that basic concept. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. It's uh, it's amazing how, as you age, you realize how what you thought you knew isn't necessarily uh you know to be all end all right well well, at least you said it best where you think you know everything and then you actually start to learn something you realize you're a complete idiot you don't know anything yeah i find i spend the bulk of my time in the pit of my coaching career like i don't know anything yeah and i yeah. talk to other coaches that are just starting out like where do you know like, i don't know anything <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely like that the uh, the farther down the rabbit hole you go you realize yeah it's not a rabbit hole it's a, it's something much larger right yeah, it's endless so. pit. it never it's a, a vacuum is void <laughs> yeah. and it's humbling when you realize it and you sit back you're like whoa i had no idea <laughs> yeah. well i i find with uh with our our jobs as uh, fitness coaches trainers things like that um our rabbit hole is so huge yeah. it really is right like you could get down to like the cellular level of function when it pertains to like fitness and then you can do the exact same thing in nutrition mm -hmm. and then you have psychology as another aspect of what we do it's just like this massive field that encompasses so much yeah. um, and then the offshoot just from those three subjects alone is yeah is, yeah which is one of the really cool things there's always something you know someone's opinion to read on this topic and there's always conflicting opinions or you know there's this you know information this way or that way that it, it just it's fun because you never stop learning right? yeah well oh. truly there's so much science that like is just coming out on human physiology too that before it was just guesses that people were making and now there's actually science because of the wearables that we have and all the other scientific um, basically apps that you can have to get that information now. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's a really, I always find it interesting when I talk with coaches and athletes and they're like, like, why do you keep reading? Why do you keep studying? Why do you keep learning? And it's like, cause, if you don't, you're pretty much screwed in this field. Like if you aren't learning something every day, yeah. you're, you're pretty much behind. Like yeah. there's no way around it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you're learning so much more than just, you know, the movements or the exercises. You're learning yeah. the levers, the the chemical compounds that make up the rest of the story. You're learning nutrition. You're learning like it's never ending. And then yeah. you're going to like, my client has a crappy day. You know, they, they, had, they didn't sleep all night. Their kid kept them up. Are they going to squat? Like, there's just so many different like avenues and facets to take into consideration just in a single training session while designing a, tra a training program. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. if I could go back, I do, I do psychology and kinesiology, <laughs> right? Like I would not yeah. go to trade school. I would go back and do those things instead because that psychology alone is just a huge component that we might not have the the education for but we have the understanding of how to work with it and discuss it a little bit yeah i i think i think there's something to be said for uh the personal touch and understanding kind of what other people are going through and their motivational factors to you know coax them into doing certain things so yeah. Anyways, guys, I'll, uh, I'll let you go there. Thank you for uh, participating in this. I look forward to talking with you guys in the future in greater detail on certain subjects. Fabulous. Thank you very much. All right. All right.